I want you to take a second, close your eyes. Go ahead, do it. While you close your eyes, I want you to think of some of your favorite stories, particularly those in the realm of film. It'll help this exercise just a little bit if you can think of a film with the word story in the title. This could be a film that you can watch with your family on a Friday or Saturday night, snuggled up in the blanket with a bucket of popcorn, something that warms your heart, that challenges your mind, that feeds your soul. Do you have one in your brain? Okay, open your eyes. Perhaps you thought of Toy Story, a classic Pixar film about an astronaut and a cowboy who become the unlikeliest of friends and who find greater community amidst some very challenging times. Maybe you thought of West Side Story, a story about two different people from different opposite ends of the aisle, of the neighborhood. It's love, but I hate to tell you, it's also tragedy. Perhaps you even thought of a Christmas story, a classic holiday flick about a boy who wants what he wants for Christmas and nothing more. Well, there's a common thread between these three movies as well as so many other films and types of music and art and media. And the common thread is that they all challenge the lived experience, the human experience. They tell us what it means to be loved or hated, to be accepted or to be rejected, to be alone or to be in community. At its core, storytelling centers humanity. But I have very bad news. Our world, our society, we have a problem, an issue, if you will. Something that's been bubbling up and over for hundreds upon hundreds of years, and we're seeing it now more than ever before. We have a problem, and that problem is that we have unknowingly created a gap. Not that type of gap. <laughs> we've created a humanity gap. We've lost the art of connection. We've lost the art of being able to see someone for someone and not something. We have a lot of besties, but not a lot of best friends. We have a lot of fans and followers in our phone every single day, but how many people can you truly say that you follow? We've put notoriety before humanity. We've put identity before humanity. We've even put familiarity before humanity. But it would not be in my character as Marcus Knight to come to a TED Talk and be a Debbie Downer. I also have good news for you. There is a solution to this problem. There is an answer to your question. And I'm sure the question is something like, Marcus, how can I make change? How can I make it better? How can I make a wave in my society, in my community? Well, I just told you. Do you remember at the beginning of this talk when we went through those three movies and I told you that storytelling at its finest, at its purest, is the thing that centers humanity. So, if we have a humanity gap, the best way to fill it is obviously by storytelling. Because storytelling is simply language with intention. Language with intention. Language only, and you're just speaking out the side of your mouth nonchalantly intention only, and then it becomes something that's passive, something that never leads to action. Even from the beginning of time, people and tribes and communities were communicating one thing to one another to achieve a goal. There was an end to this means. Well, I would argue that a lot of the imbalance, a lot of the inequity, 
a lot of the injustice that we see in our world today is because somebody chose to tell a particular story. Somebody crafted a narrative that put somebody above, below, or at the same level as somebody else. Think about it. We have racism, sexism, classism, ageism, anti-Semitism, homophobia, xenophobia. All of these things that exist in our world is simply because someone told a certain story about somebody else. So, by basic logic and reasoning, I can deduce that the answer to bringing equity, to bringing balance, to bringing peace to our world is not by telling a particular story, but rather the entire story. All of it, 100%, unadulterated, without wrinkle, spot, or blemish, all of the story, every single time. Don't believe me? Let's revisit the movies. You have Woody and Buzz in Toy Story. Woody is the cowboy. He is the right-hand man to Andy. He is a toy, a machine, and nothing else. Buzz is the explorer. He's the big dreamer. He is the one that's going to save the entire universe from the, emperor, the evil Emperor Zerg. And that's all he is. But when you tell the entire story, you realize that Woody actually teaches Buzz what it means to be a companion, what it means to be loyal to something that's bigger than yourself. And Buzz teaches Woody how to take a calculated risk, how to think outside of the box, how to be a big dreamer. Okay, West Side Story. If you tell part of the story, you see that Maria and Tony are from opposite ends of the aisle. They go together like water and oil. They should not happen. But if you tell the entire story, you'll actually realize that love is transcendent. Love is bigger than culture. Love is bigger than what side of the neighborhood you lived on. Love conquers all. If you only tell part of the Christmas story, you'll see Ralphie as the boy who could do no wrong. He's everybody's best friend. He's the golden child. He is the person that's gonna save the day every single time. But if you tell the whole story, you'll realize that Ralphie, even Ralphie, has some work to do. He needs forgiveness. He messes up from time to time. There is still growth to be done. Do you see how in each of these examples, the act of telling the entire story is the thing that centers humanity? That is the thing that grounds us all together. And I'm sure you're thinking, okay, Marcus, you've said the fluffy words, you've given us the nice message, we changed the world by telling stories. How do I do that? What is the actionable steps behind that? Well, I'm glad you asked. When you tell the whole story, you answer two questions. Who am I? And what is the world around me? Who am I? And what is the world around me? And in order to fully embrace that, you have to engage in three things. Number one, you have to engage in brand-led repositioning. What you do when you reposition a brand or an identity is you're taking something that has once been associated with something, someone, some place, what have you, and you uproot that identity, much like this tree. You uproot it and then you replace it with something better. You replace it with something easier, something stronger. What I'm telling you is that in order to make change in your world, you have to relearn some things. You cannot be the same person in 2030 than you were in 2020, than you were in 2010, than you were in 2000. You have to be able to get a little bit better each and every single day, even if you have to unlearn some habits and processes that you learned as a child. You should not be the same tomorrow than you were yesterday. You also have to engage in belief-led listening. When somebody tells you their triumphs, their trials, their fears, their hopes, don't listen to them. 
believe them. It is the truth of the hypocrite. It is the truth of the performative ally to say to somebody, I see you, I hear you, but not I believe you. Because when you start believing people when they speak, this means that you're taking yourself out of the way. You're taking your ego out of the equation. You're putting yourself off of the pedestal and putting them up instead. Something better, something greater can flourish out of you believing people. Don't just hear them when they talk. Believe them when they speak. I have a friend. She's a fellow speaker. She's a creative. She's an entrepreneur and an organizer. And she has this phrase called trust led philanthropy. And basically what that means is I believe you enough. I trust you enough because you are closest to the situation, because you're closest to the problem, because you are closest to whatever ails you. I also trust you enough to be closest to the solution. How dare I try to play savior and step into your issues and solve them all for you? Believe people when they speak. And last but not least, you have to engage in byproduct manufacturing. Now, I'll be honest, a little transparent here. I did want all of my um, topics to start with the letter B <laughs> and end with ING. But that's neither here nor there. You have to leave a legacy. It's not about you. Change is not about you. It is about somebody after you. It's about somebody connected to you. To all of my older folks in the room and to those who are watching, it is irresponsible of you to say, oh, I've done my job. I'm going to sit back. I'm going to watch as the young people try and figure it out. It is irresponsible because as long as you are breathing, as long as you are alive on this earth, you have something to contribute. We need you. We need your wisdom. We need your expertise. We need your connections. We need the legacy that you leave behind. We need you in this. And young folks too, I'm talking to you as well. Young folks, it's irresponsible of you to say the older folks left us all this. We don't know what to do. We don't know what climate to operate in. We don't know how to move this thing forward. We need you too. We need your innovation, your entrepreneurship, your mindset, your entrepreneurial way of thinking and feeling and being. We need your personality. We need you too. A spoiler alert to everybody in the room. In order for there to be change, it has to be an intergenerational effort. It has to be. If it is not, the lasting change will not last. You might be famous on social media for a couple of days, but the change will not last. It is all or nothing. And this is all wrapped up in the idea that we're connected, all of us. Each of us has a network. And a better way of saying that is we all have immediate influence. Immediate influence. That means that you're connected to somebody, whether it's one person or a billion people, you have stake in this. You have influence, you have possibility in this. Influence in an immediate sense means that you do not have to be president of the United States to make a difference. Immediate influence means that you do not have to be like Oprah and give a car away a day to every single person on the planet to make a difference. Immediate influence means that you do not have to be the CEO of 500 Fortune 500 companies to make a difference. Immediate influence means what can I do day by day in my immediate circle? What can I do in my neighborhood, in my church, at my college or university, 
in my household? What can I do in my immediate circle to expand the space that I'm occupying? Because the truth of the matter is when your space expands, you expand. Your heart expands. Your mind expands. Your perspective and your perception expands. All of these things expand. And at the end of the day, the stories you tell will expand as well. And it's all because you chose to use your influence, your skills, your gifts, your talents, the things that only you can do and nobody else. Perhaps telling the whole story means advocating for something that's bigger than you. Perhaps telling the whole story means going back to your family's house at Thanksgiving and having that really awkward political talk. Perhaps telling the entire story means sitting down with somebody who you might not agree with but could learn from. Perhaps telling the, the whole story means starting a nonprofit or being able to start your own business or personal brand or something along that line that can influence and impact people that you are connected to. It doesn't take all of the, the showness. It doesn't take all the theatrics. All you have to do is use your influence to believe people when they speak. Use your influence to leave a legacy that's bigger than yourself. Use your influence to make sure that you are unlearning and relearning some things that you've always grown up with. It doesn't take all of the big things. It doesn't take writing a million dollar check on a huge check board to give to somebody. It doesn't take being able to run for office or do all of these dramatic things. Telling the whole story means centering humanity. If we see that you're human, that is enough. If we see that somebody else is human, that is enough. In fact, it's more than enough. That is how we solve this problem. That is how we bring humanity back. Thank you.